Hello and welcome to another episode of whatever it is that this is. Uh, it's a really exciting episode and if you're looking for me at GDC and I hope you're having a great time, you will not find me because I'm, I'm here. So it's, uh, it's not possible. Today we're going to be jumping into Unreal Engine and we're going to be hooking up the start of a footstep system, which means going through some of the events, um, tagging some animations and kind of getting our feet wet with uh, a little bit of uh, animation stuff. And, and it's, an, it's a skill that I, I do really see uh, happening all the time as you go through uh, being a junior audio designer initially because we're flying around this world and we're kind of expecting that we would be able to run around, but instead we just have this amorphous uh, creature. So instead of that, what we, I want to do is I want to go to add and I want to go to add feature or content pack and I want to uh, select the third person project. Now this is just a default uh, third person thing. You could select top down, you could put a car in it for all I care, but we're going to go with the third person version for now. This is just so we can see the character a little bit better. Um, it's a sort of metallic, uh, creepy looking Iron Man thing um, but in a way it's beautiful like some things that are creepy and metallic <laughs> um, but we're gonna hit add to project it's going to dump in a whole bunch of content um, for us to have a play with it's gonna give us some animations some blueprints and some stuff that we need to pass now uh, when we're looking through this we're expecting once we drop a character in that we can hit play and be able to run around as a character but that's not really how this works. And instead what happens is we are still a camera, okay? And we're a camera looking at the shiny metal ass of a thing uh, or, or, a, or a person or a, whatever it is that, that this is. Uh, anyway, so how do we do that? Well, it's a part of possession, uh, which isn't just a creepy thing that you do to people, but is instead uh, something that you can do to characters in Unreal Engine. So what we need to do is we need to go to our details panel and start searching possession, okay, or possess. You'll see this auto possess player, which I'm just going to set to player zero. It will be different if it's a multiplayer game. It will be different for, uh, for online and things like that. Talk to the team that's putting together this. But for now, if I set it to player zero and I placed in the world and I hit play, I will, when I start moving around, be able to control this character. So in a second, when my frames pick back up, you're going to see I can move around with this character, I can run, I can jump, I can look at the beautiful nanite and uh, mega scans assets all over the shop, and I have some freedom to explore the world. Now, parts of this world might be less traversable than others, that's not really the point here. Instead, the point is as follows. We're looking at all these materials, this beautiful dirt, this beautiful dry grass, some uh, wooden planks of different measures, well, some hollow, some have space underneath, and it's really important to think, what do these sound like? Giving, uh, giving the player a place in the world means having a lot of variation for these basic footstep elements, um, and even, you know, how hard we hit the ground, so whether we're jumping or whether we're landing, um, how much our clothes move as well, uh, is all sort of stems from this animation event principle. So, that's what we're going to be setting up here. We're going to be going into the animations for this character, which means looking at the two blueprints, which is ABP Manny and ABP Quinn. Manny Quinn. Nice. When we open uh, ABP Quinn, we will see that uh, she's actually a child boot blueprint um, of ABP Manny, which means we need to look at the animation blueprint, ABP, of uh, Manny instead. When we open up ABP Manny, you can see we have a few pretty cool features in here. We have some stuff that's updating the animation live in the viewer. We have some elements talking about uh, the movement component, the character component, the velocity that we're moving at, the ground speed that we have, whether we're in the air or not in the air, whether we're falling um, or moving. And these are all parts that we will explore in a future tutorial, which will be uh, about making making some movement loops, making some stuff sort of swish around to give us that, that weight of movement that really kind of fills in amongst the foley, because it's very difficult to foley every action unless you're the last of us. In which case, kudos. Uh, I don't know what you're doing here, but I like it. If you work at Naughty Dog, say hello. So uh, you can see the animations here for Manny. You can see the animations here for Quinn. And I'm going to open up the run animation. Now, the way the animation notifies work is we make a track by going across the notify track um, and hit the drop down, make a new track for us to work on. 
And then we need to add notifies for each of the elements that we want. Okay, so I'm gonna name a track audio and I'm gonna kind of scrub through to find the point where the footfall occurs. Normally we would see things in skeleton notify and we'll see that in a second, but for now I'm gonna hit new notify and call it AU audio underscore footstep underscore left. Now you can get creative with the names if you feel like, but this is the animation tagging I was telling you about a little bit before. It's kind of a tedious process, but there's some real beauty in it as well. Now, once you've done your second animation notify, which is your uh, AU underscore footstep right, you're gonna see them in the skeleton notify, so you don't need to type them out each time because you're creating a new event here. You're creating some logic that's going to drop in. Now, this is a little bit like music in a way where uh, the push and pull, like how far in front of the event the audio needs to come is, is really to taste um, and, and how the character moves. Maybe if they're very stoic, it's, it's, it's really regimented. There's a, almost a rhythm to it. Maybe if they're a little drunk, you want to start skittering it. And I'd really talk to your animators as well, because they'll have plenty of ideas about the, uh, the impetus behind the movement of each action. Now going through these animations, you can see it gets a lot faster once you've made your initial ones, because you can kind of scrub straight up, go to it, uh, scroll across, right click, skeleton notify, drop it in, and we will be able to use this for anything. Now, as you get to the end of the clip, it's important to realize, have I done the footfall? It usually does start with their feet on the ground because it'd be weird otherwise. Have I done the footfall yet or not? And you can see we actually have done the first footfall. So I don't want to do a double footfall right at the end. When I hit play, it will cycle around or a good animation will cycle around and you won't even really be able to notice. One of the beautiful things here is that we can move on to the blueprint stage. So, in the blueprint stage, when we go back to uh, ABP Manny, remember uh, Manny's the one with the logic, we're going to be able to check out uh, some of these event notifiers. Now, if I right click any of the space and I start typing uh, footstep notify or footstep left, AU underscore footstep, I'm going to immediately start to see uh, the events that I was talking about, which will fire as long as this is hooked up properly and there isn't really a way not to. For now, because I'm a sound designer and that's what we do, we do a print statement just to make sure that our logic is correct because debugging kind of sucks with breakpoints where the game stops every one second and you don't really get a feel for whether you're seeing things to begin with. So hitting save, going back to our game, you should see in the top left corner, if you've got the debugging on, our left and right uh, march, which is pretty cool. Uh, the way that this works is that will fire forever and it's up to us to determine what that logic is. Now, if you had some logic where you were, you know, you only could take an amount of steps to get to this certain house or to run away from a person before they noticed you, you would do the same thing here. You might not use an audio event, but otherwise, you know, it's a thing. So what are we trying to do now? Well, now we've determined that a footstep occurs, we need to check the material. Now, we're only gonna get halfway through this process today, but we're thinking about drawing a line straight down uh, from wherever the middle of this character is to the, to the floor beneath it. Um, now, the character here, we're gonna be ray casting from about the hips is about the origin of this character straight down to the floor. Now, what does that mean? Well, I need to get the player character first and foremost, because we're going to need the location of the player character. Once we have that location, we're going to need uh, another sort of distance or, or an end point, and we're going to draw a line from literally from start to end. Now, I'm going to cache this inside a player, or inside of a character um, variable, just because I don't really like doing the get over and over again if we already know. Uh, it's just an optimization thing. Uh, it's not really necessary. You could do the get each time if you wanted to, but I think it's needed this way. So setting my uh, player index up, my current player will now always be the correct player and I'll be able to use them to get the location. So my current player, if I hold uh, control, drag it out and then grab the actor location. Okay, so get location, get actor location, there it is. When I click that, I'm going to get a vector three, which is just an X and a Y and a Z point, uh, sort of struct all, all bundled together. Um, and I'm gonna be able to draw a line trace, okay, from me, or line trace by channel, I should say, from me to some point that isn't me. <laughs> so where is this from? Well, our start point is our actor location and our end point is, depending on your height, an, an amount in the Z, Z uh, axis 
away, right? Now you could get clever here and you could set this up to be, uh, a, you know, a, a variable that showed you the size. So you could change the size of characters or you could just shoot, overshoot it if you wanted to. I'm just going to set this up to like 500. Um, and just basically I've pulled off the actor location. I've done a minus to subtract a vector. I've subtracted 500 away. And that's about the distance we have. The whole logic can be duplicated. It's, uh, it's, like for like exactly the same thing here um, so we can dra drag that straight into the footstep right because we will want left and right footsteps now it's convention in film to foley left and right footsteps games tend to just have footsteps but if you want to be fantastic like the last of us yet again <laughs> incredible foley systems uh, you want to change it that way the only other thing I want you to change is the debug type to persistent this is just to ensure that when you run around uh, you will see it Back in Unreal, I'm going to hit play. We're going to wait a second uh, for my computer just to get going, just so it looks really cool. And then when we run, we're expecting to see some kind of red line from the hips all the way down to the floor. And you can even see the hit point, which is pretty cool. So we can now run around with this. We can draw shapes because, you know, shapes, right? But uh, it's, it's not really what we want. The next step is a bigger step. It is to do the MetaSounds implementation itself. But what we've done today is, is wrap ourselves into the uh, event system, done some animation tagging, seen how that changes the feel of the character. And I think that's a big step. I think that's really, really exciting. So thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of whatever it is that this is. Um, I've really enjoyed putting these together so far. So uh, drop it in the comments if you're uh, looking forward to the meta sounds or how you uh, had whether you do left and right footsteps in games um, I've liked to but it's always been a little bit hard to do for implementation so I'd be keen to see what people are doing with it uh, anyway thank you so much for checking it out and I'll uh, I'll see you next time